Hello, my name is Dr. Martin Rosen, and I've been in private practice and teaching chiropractic technique, practice management, and philosophy since 1982. I am a certified SOT practitioner, craniopath, and pediatric chiropractor. The following videos are excerpts from our learning and teaching series, Correcting Cranial Specific Subluxation Patterns and TMJ. Included in this 3 DVD package and PDF workbook format are specific adjusting protocols for the occiput, sphenobasilar, temporal, and frontal subluxation patterns, both intra- and extraoral protocols. They also include the complete correction protocols for a variety of TMD dysfunctions. If your practice includes TMJ or craniopathy, these DVDs are a must to help you become more efficient and more effective in your cranial adjusting protocols. But basically, depending on if it's an ascending or a descending pattern, it's very rare, unless there's been severe trauma, that the temporomandibular joint is the crux of the problem. It usually is a compensatory reaction to either a pelvis, a cervical, or a cranial fault pattern. Because it has a lot of flexibility, has a lot of mobility, and it's built to open 2,500 to 3,000 times a day. So it's built for the long haul. So the idea today is going to basically look at the specific subluxation patterns that set up the temporal mandibular joint imbalance to correct those first and then receive the TMJ. It's a lot quicker process. It's a lot more effective process for the patient. And in my opinion, it becomes a lot more um, efficient over a long term. So that's what the whole goal is going to be. So the actual temporal mandibular joint adjusting is actually going to be the last thing we're going to do. We're going to try and set up the whole cranium so that when we make that adjustment, it's a much quicker, it's a much easier process. All right, so these are the muscles we're looking at. We've got a temporalis muscle here around the temporal. There's an anterior and posterior portion, and we'll talk about how that works in a while. We have the bucinator muscle, which comes across here and is going to, help, again, help with elevation and depression in the mandible. We have the masseter muscle, which is very commonly the area where people will be rubbing. When the jaw hurts, they're rubbing the masseter all, all the time. Because the masseters are going to basically look where they're attaching and look where they're holding. They're taking the stress of any abnormal position of the jaw. We have our anterior scalenes here. This is the digastric that Muscle I talked about a minute ago. It attaches right onto the mastoid process. All right. So these are some of the major muscles, we'll look at the pterygoids in a minute, of the jaw and neck and how they work. So we're looking at the digastric muscle. There we go. Thank you. So the digastric muscle, seems like right the way it was, not it? Depresses the mandible and can elevate the hyoid bone. So remember, that's another thing. People have swallowing issues, and sometimes they'll feel like there's something stuck in their throat that's the hyoid, and as we know, the hyoid is the only bone in the body that does not articulate with any other bone. So we're looking for that, opening and closing. We're looking to see, sometimes as they open, the jaw will go like this as they close. They'll come back into a Z like that. I'm just looking for that. Then what I do is have you open just a little bit, and I want your jaw to the left, and then to the right. And again, I'm feeling the condyles left and then right. So when he goes to the right, there's a little bit of a, you can feel a little bit of a hitch and there's a little bit, let your jaw go in the midline. A little sensitive here. Yeah. So little, so what I write in my notes, slightly hypermobile lateral deviation to the right. You can measure it. You can use a caliper um, and measure the lateral deviation if you want to be really specific about it. So we the lateral deviation. Now we're going to look at the occlusion. So open slow and now close slow. And you're going to hold the lower lip. And you want to see, now in his case, his midline teeth line up, so I'm not worried about a crossbite. He's got a midline there. And then what I'm going to do is place my little finger cots on. And what I want you to do is open. I'm going to press against the upper molars and very slowly bite. Okay, so his left side hits slightly earlier than his right side. You felt that, right? Uh -huh. okay. I come into the pterygoid process, you come off of the last molar, come slightly medial, and then on inhalation, I lift the pterygoid process superior and posterior until I feel the greater wing of the sphenoid move. As soon as I feel the greater wing of the sphenoid move, I contact behind the mastoid process, and on the next inhalation while holding the pterygoid, I rotate the temporal bone counterclockwise. 
I hold that contact until I feel the tissue release. If it doesn't, on the next exhalation, I maintain the contact. Inhalation, I rotate it again. Exhalation, hold the contact. Inhalation, rotate it again. Usually again, by the third time, it's, it's done. Then I release the pterygoid process, and I come back onto the zygomatic arch. Every single time, regardless of the side that you're on, when you want to correct the zygomatic position here, because again, the zygomatic arch and zygoma attaches directly to the temporal bone, every single time on inhalation, you rotate the zygomatic fossa to the left side of the cranium. At the same time, you rotate this internally. So you go like that on inhalation, it locks it in, then you relax your contact. So three steps, release, correct, and set. So in her particular case, actually this one, a little sensor there, yeah, this one is actually externally rotated, I mean internally rotated, so I'm going to correct the left side. Okay, I'm going to rotate the head, the other side stays down, I'm going to contact behind the master because what I want to do now on the left side is I want to rotate it clockwise when I'm going to correct it. Okay, because it's clockwise. So I'm going to have her open her mouth, I'm going to come in gently until I hit the pterygoid, right? Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now she's going to breathe in, as she breathes in I'm going to lift the pterygoid superior and posterior and I'm feeling with my thumb to this sphenoid moves. Breathe out. This has to be a very slow contact. Breathe in again. There it goes. Now it just moved. Breathe out. Now I'm going to hold that contact on the next inhalation. Breathe in. I'm going to actually rotate the temporal bone. Let it out. Breathe in one more. And I'm still lifting this pterygoid. Good. I'm going to stop there. There is one more, but that's enough because I don't know what else is going on. I've gotten the temporal bone in there. I'm going to come in to the zygoma. She's going to relax her jaw a little bit. And on the next inhalation, I'm going to lift the zygoma superior and then roll it to the left as I hold the temporal and then set it. And then we'll come back. I'll just balance the temporal. And actually, this should be a little less sensitive. For further information about this and our other titles, or to place an order, visit our website at drmartinrosen.com. We have books and training DVDs covering a variety of topics including pediatric adjusting, sacral occipital technique, cranial adjusting, soft tissue organ reflex protocols, and adjusting protocols for the pregnant patient.